everyone, I'm Brooke, and welcome back to my kitchen, where we're gonna cook today with the lovely Doug. I was led to believe I would be filing my calluses with this microplane. We're Surprise. not. That's disgusting. We're not eating your calluses. We're gonna zest lemon and make some really delicious roasted butternut squash, goat cheese, penne pasta with chicken. I am prepared to be proven wrong because delicious and butternut squash are not synonymous in my library, but that's why I'm here to learn with all you other Philistines. What's the first step, Brooke? So we're gonna start with your favorite part. We're gonna manhandle some meat first. Three delicious chicken cutlets. They're actually breasts. Wait, no, leave that. Ah! Jesus. Why? Okay, so the breasts are never even. They're, see how there's like a bigger chunk? Yeah, they're And so thicker. then they don't cook evenly. So the best way to do this and not like splatter foodborne illness all over your kitchen is to cover it with plastic wrap before you start like pounding it with a meat mallet. If you don't have a meat mallet, you can use like a can or, or a hammer. Like Yo quiero salmonella. I don't understand what the problem is. So we really just want to get it to even thickness. So. I've already learned something today. I didn't know this was the thing. So I don't want to hit the thin parts. Just the thick part. Does it really break the meat down and make it flatter? It's trying to. I mean, so get I'm the, somewhat get dubious the about this, but it's fun. You're not aggressive enough. You're, oh, You're wow. supposed to be a little more aggressive here. Like, All right. So see how this is like a little more even? That one's perfect. See how it's flat? Mm, yeah, I'm gonna hit the first one. Okay, much better. So now that we've got the breasts kind of even thickness, we're gonna transfer them to a cooking dish. Perfect. I'm gonna let you handle the meat and I'll do the seasoning so we don't cross contaminate. Thank God we're cooking this. Okay, gentle. What? You just beat the shit out of it with a spiky <laughs> hammer. Be gentle, dog. We hate this chicken. All right, so I just have olive oil. I've got some nice extra virgin, and I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil, and I kind of just want you to roll around and roll this around and make sure it's on like both sides and like evenly coated. And now it won't stick to the dish, and it's gonna give us a little flavor. So I have two options for seasoning. I've got chicken grilling seasoning, which is delicious for poultry and seafood. And then I've got Italian seasoning. And I think we're just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of both. What is, what's I'm the a big fan what's of over, over seasoning. Do we know honestly. what's in them? Garlic, sage, onion, rosemary, thyme, oregano, pepper, fennel seed, all kinds of good stuff. No, no, now we definitely wash it. No! Uh, God gave us pants for a reason. Oh my God, you probably haven't washed those jeans in like a year either. I put them in the freezer when they smell funny. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not letting you touch anything else after that. Why not? There's going in the oven. It's going to get cooked. I know. All right. So this is a little bit this of our Italian. So I haven't caught the COVID. I don't need herd immunity. <laughs> it's just debatable. Immune. If anybody was going to get it, it was going to be me. Probably. So you can use as much or as little seasoning as you like, honestly, unless you have like high blood pressure or something. Before you Easy the on the salt. One. Okay, we're gonna cook this chicken <laughs> for 25 minutes, roughly 20 to 25, until it's pink. It's not pink in the center. We want it white, or if you have a thermometer, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So the chicken is in the oven. Now we're gonna go ahead and prep the butternut squash. And when that timer reaches 20, we're gonna pop these in and roast them in the oven. I hate cutting these. They're terrible. So if you wanna make it easier to cut these, you can pierce it with a fork and stick it in the microwave for a couple minutes to soften it. Then you cut both ends off, cut it in half, spoon out the seeds, then you slice it. And I, we don't got time for that. So you can buy it pre-cut. And honestly, I think sometimes it's worth the extra couple dollars, especially if you're trying to do a big meal prep and you're in a time crunch. So that's what we did. We bought it pre-cut, we cheated. And all we're gonna do, super easy. Just throw it on here. I did it at Brooke's direction. I don't yeah. cut corners. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this really is delicious by itself. It's kind of got like a sweetness to it. But what we're gonna do is just drizzle a tiny, tiny bit of olive oil and a little salt and pepper because we're going for a savory flavor in this pasta dish. 
So easy on the, the oil and just drizzle. Beautiful. So much finesse. I learned from you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is just good old fashioned black pepper in the grinder and some salt. Why don't we have dick shaped pepper and salt grinders? Oh wait. Everything's a dildo. I try hard enough. I mean, <laughs> thanks, Brooke. <laughs> Outclassed again. <laughs> yep. Does it matter what level, like what what rack the stuff's on? I usually have two racks, and then I keep them towards the center. Okay. You definitely don't want them too low or too high. Is it a convection oven thing? Like I don't understand. I uh, mean, this is not a convection oven. This is like a traditional. Just a traditional oven. Does that mean it's like hotter at the top or the bottom or? Yeah, it varies. And if you put it too high on the top in this one, it'll brown the top. So when you're baking, you want to be careful. It's more important when you're baking or when you're making pizza. Brooke hates me. She can't stand being close to me. That's why she keeps You won't wash away. your chicken hands. We need to I address this. I'm filing a complaint with HR. You're spreading foodborne illness. HR doesn't care about chicken hands. We're gonna cook penne pasta next. I'm calling Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Super simple. We just start, right now we're boiling a pot of just plain water. No olive oil, no salt. We will go ahead and add salt once it's boiling with the pasta, and we're gonna add a lot of salt. You want it to taste like ocean water. Why do you wait? There's this myth where, oh, if I add salt, it'll boil faster. It's actually the opposite. So we're gonna wait, let it boil, add a bunch of salt, and it actually helps the pasta not stick together. The salt does, mm -hmm. not the olive oil. Another myth. What? Also, Italians would laugh at you. I've been doing it wrong this whole time. In. So, and then the best way to do it is don't rinse it after. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drain it off and we're gonna keep just a tiny bit of pasta water reserve to coat the pasta and almost help make a nice little sauce with the goat cheese. That's the plan. I guess this was a worthwhile afternoon. Okay, so now we're just pretty much waiting for everything to cook and be done. We are gonna crumble goat cheese. This is a good budget saver. You can buy it pre-crumbled, but it's really easy to do yourself. So this is just a chunk of goat cheese and you honestly just take it piece at a time and work it with your fingers. If you have too much testosterone in your system to speak French, this is called chevre. I don't even think I pronounced it right. Probably not. Too much testosterone. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna slice this up into strips. We let it rest for a couple minutes and then we'll top the pasta with chicken. All right, so pretty much we're just gonna add cheese and spinach and a little bit of lemon zest and olive oil, stir it around, cover it back up because that's how the spinach is gonna wilt a little bit so it's not raw. So. That easy? You're yeah, just like literally easy. gonna dump goat cheese in it? That easy. Buku goat cheese. Have you ever zested anything before? No. It's so good. So you just use this little microplane and all we're gonna do is slide. Can a cheese grater work um, too? Uh, yeah, if you have a really fine side of one of those cheese grating blocks. This actually has a lot of flavor. You'd be super it surprised. It smells good, but it doesn't look like you're putting anything in there really. But see these I little flakes? See it. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> there they are. We're gonna go ahead and add the spinach now. And I'm gonna do like three big handfuls because it's gonna wilt a lot. Why don't we just put it all in? And we're gonna stir it. Can we just put it all in? We can if you want to. I like spinach. You do? Yeah, I love spinach. Okay. Yeah, then put it all in. All right, you stir, and then we're gonna cover it with a lid and let it wilt. Brooke says she doesn't measure things, so I'm like, let's do it all. What I we don't. Gonna, what are we gonna do with leftover spinach? So we're just gonna give that a couple minutes and the heat and steam will just naturally let it wilt on its own. That's it? That's it. We're gonna wait, then we'll stir in the rest. The chicken tastes delicious, but it also is a little rubbery. What's up with that? So if it tastes like it has a rubbery texture, that's because it's overcooked. Hmm. And we did overcook ours, we timed it wrong. 
but the center pieces should be okay. We also taste tested the end piece. Is it because you hammered it, really it too aggressively? No, never, <laughs> never my fault. So that's why I would recommend if you're cooking the chicken, I give you a range, set the timer for the lower end, which should be around 20 minutes, check it. If it needs a couple more minutes, then you can go up. How do you know if it needs, I mean like without a thermometer, is it like if the chicken isn't running clear or? So I would just get a fork and a knife and cut into the center piece and then just kind of like spread it open a little bit and you can see if it's pink and still raw looking, that's really it. Mm -hmm. Pink and raw in the middle. This is the only time in life it's not good. Did um, you get pine nuts? So I scoured the shelves at our local co-op. That should be all the clue you need. They should have had pine nuts but I couldn't find any. And contrary to Corey's opinion, I do know what they look like. They look like little tiny pine testicles and they are delicious and nutty. They are really good, but that's okay. This will be good without it. But if we did have pine nuts, we would just heat a little skillet over the stove, throw them in and toast them for a second. And then that would be kind of our final topping sprinkle. My condolences. I own a tiger farm now. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and add the butternut squash in and stir it around. Sure. I'm just going to use my hands because they're clean and not raw chickeny like Doug. If you believe that, I got a tiger farm for sale in Ohio. If you're down with a vegan lifestyle, this meal is already complete. Fuck that chicken. It's bad for you anyway. Processed hormones just makes your titties huge. Wait. More chicken, please. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we are ready to plate and eat our pasta. You wanna try some? Is Rose Kennedy on a black dress? Little summer, big summer. And then just... Is that enough for you? Um, yeah, that's good. Come. Oh, wiggle, 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 wiggle. There it goes. And then I'll do the chicken. They say the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. That's the appropriate country mannerism. You gotta get a good bite with the, oh, with butter the butternut squash. squash. Yeah, All you right. gotta get everything. All of it? Okay. Mm. Actually. The lemon zest adds a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't dislike this at all. I'll take it. I'm gonna tell you, there's things in the meal plan. I look at them and I'm like, that's questionable. But it's good. Like, really good. I could use again. It's pretty easy meal prep, too. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't so bad, especially when Brooke's cooking it for you. We're gonna go ahead and leave the recipe in the description so you can make your own butternut squash goat cheese pasta. If you liked this recipe, check out the nutrition program. We've got hundreds and hundreds of recipes and they're exactly scaled to your needs for nutrition and performance. What that means is if you want all these recipes, you actually have to subscribe to our app. It's not just an Instagram thing. And if you want more free recipes, then subscribe to this channel, click like, and ring the bell.